to give us a nice presentation about the journey of a sample that will be included in this warming up session. Thank you, Tomek, for the nice introduction. I will try to share my screen right now. Okay. okay. So every oh. okay. So everyone see anything? Can you can you tell me that everything is okay? I think it's, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's okay. So we can start. So my name is Tomas Sobol, and. Today, I will present you some kind of pre uh, the present the presentation that will be a little bit different from the rest of the presentation that we already see, so and that we will see, because my presentation will start with the some short story and yeah, some sh short story or the fairy tale, and that is not about the knights or princesses or uh, fine castles. It is also not the story about the like Tarantino st style story. Uh, yeah, with some yeah, some action, but this will be the story about something much more important, and it is a scientific story about the life. And yeah, we can just start the story. And yeah, once up, uh, so once upon a time on the planet Earth, uh, the ocean create the ocean were uh, from the uh, water ocean uh, were create was created, uh, it, it, it was something like about three billions years ago. And nature uh, in this time started to create some kind of structures uh, in the darkest and the deepest uh, at the uh, places of the earth at the bottom of the ocean. And these structures look like this. And these structures like chimney-like structures uh, was, were created from the molecules on the, uh, that, that we call uh, calcium carbonate. And uh, yeah, in these, in these structures, something, something very important starts happening at some point, it's three billion years ago. And just to check it, we have to go a little bit closer into the structures and we will see that the structures are filled with, uh, they are filled with some caves some small pores that uh, were filled with the, with the water and during the when the, the structures are like growing building building around these pores start closing and the water was trapped inside it and nothing really would happen if not another material that was introduced into these pores and the material was introduced in some kind of another process that was the cracking of the earth when during this process the lava was introduced onto the surface of the earth into the surf like at the bottom of the sea and during this process from this cracking of the, of the surface some new material was introduced and this material that is called olivine and this is the green rocks and just was entered into the structure of this of this chimney like chimney like structure at the bottom of the sea and it was looking more or less like this and the olivine also filled these caves filled these pores uh, and what we can see here that at some point this a little this small volumes of the water was trapped into these caves and with the olivine with the calcium carbonate and some kind of sense, some reaction started. That very important reaction that uh, may, may change the planet Earth forever. And this process or this effect is called serpent serpentinization. And what it really is, the serpentinization is the process when the, this rock, the olivine, is turning into the serpentine. And this is not like one step process that's, that is very easy and and, and this, is, this is some kind of net of reaction that is occurs during the time during, but it's not like one day, uh, one day or sorry, weeks, but in billion of years, a uh, million, uh, million of, 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 of years. But in the general, we can say that during this reaction, during this uh, very long process, the two component, two, two molecules start to react with each other. And this is water and carbon dioxide start reacting with each other and create one of the most important molecule to the uh, with, with life 
could be, uh, like be, begun, begin. And this molecule is a methane. And the methane is a very simple molecule where um, just one, uh, atom of, uh, one atom of the carbon is surrounded, is connected with the, is bonded with the four uh, 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 atoms of the hydrogen. And this is like the very basic, this is the base, most, base, more, uh, most basic molecule that longer chain of the uh, carbon like uh, molecules can, can, can be created. Of. And if you just, just, yeah, like you remember that there was some kind of small uh, volumes of the water and the olivine and these uh, other, other minerals that was trapped inside this, inside this, uh, inside this chimney like structures. So this reaction can be just, yeah, proceed for the very long time. And these methanes were created, and these methanes start to react with each other, and also with the other, uh, with the other, uh, with the other molecules. And this, uh, and this, and this process can can be like, yeah, be, be just be just going for the, for the very long time. And this process is well written by the like, uh, by the by the researchers and the researchers uh, researchers. Um, have uh, like studied this problem for the very long time, and there is some uh, kind of public publications, kind of articles about the, how this process, the serpentization process, might be the source of the energy that of the of the at the origin of the light life. But there is always a but. We don't know really how the life is began. So this is only the theory. So this is one of the theory. So this is like fairy tale or the myth that I'm just talking about right now. And yeah, but this is a very nice story. So I just want to share with you about this. And what we just bring from this story is that we just take this one very important element from this, that is olivine. And we will start the bit, like the adventure of this olivine. Uh, the, like we started the, the, second, the second part of the presentation. We take this olivine on the, the adventure. And Olivine is very known, well, well known material for the human, for the for the people. It was it is known since ancient times, and um, it was already known like five thousand uh, five thousand years ago uh, by uh, by ancient in ancient Egypt and also in ancient uh, China, and the people are used are they used they using this uh, this mineral to decorate objects. To decorate the houses, to the to jewelry. It really, even right now, the, the, we're using olivine to the in, in jewelry. And what is the origin of the olivine? And it's uh, olivine can be created on the planet Earth, and is like uh, yeah, the the most basic process that that that, that, that the olivine is is here. That why that's why the olivine is on the Earth. And the olivine is created in the upper mantle and the lower part of the crust of the of the air. And during the lava eruption, and uh, is introduced onto, onto onto the surface of the of the earth. And that's that's the that's the like the most basic uh, basic process. How the olivine is introduced, uh, how we yeah, how it's introduced onto the surface. But there is another another process that uh, olivine can be can be delivered on the, on, the, on the surface of the planet, not only the Earth, is because the olivine is also created at, uh, uh, by stars. So the olivine, similar to the diamonds, can be created by stars and can be just yeah when the stars blow or uh, uh, just if it's some kind of uh, reaction on the surface of the star that will uh, free these molecules of the, the mineral to the to the to the to the to the cosmos it can, it can be also delivered like, like this to the, to the planets the comets and to the, yeah, to the different parts of the to the to the cosmos so these uh, two two ways how the olivine uh, can be produced okay so what is really the olivine olivine is the magnesium iron silicate so we can say that yeah we can see the, the, the chemical formula and the olivine is created from the magnesium, iron, uh, silicon, and oxygen, and the basic elements that we can met more, more, more or less all over the planet. 
Uh, what we else know about the olivine is that it conducts electricity under in the, under some extreme conditions. So what I mean about that that for example in the high temperatures olivine can conduct electricity. It's a conductor, but yeah, in the regular state is easily. Okay, and what else we can what we can say? So for example, we can say about the structure. We can say something about the structure of the olivine and yeah, about this like crystal structure and CBC. The crystal structure of the olivine is very complicated. Yeah, it's just a lot of atoms here, and the the, the, the atomic structure is, is quite quite complicated. But we still we can we can say say, say everything about this. But the question is right now uh, that all this science, science, science um, like science uh, uh, science can, can 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 ask how we do how we know the stuff. How we do we do we know uh, from which element? Or what elements are material are created or, or why they conduct or not conduct conducting the, the electricity or yeah what is the structure and there are some ways to 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 find out uh, about this about this about these properties of the material and one of the basic one the one that was most uh, like most important one is the is the light and not like light per se but how light interact with the matter is the, is, is the answer and and how does light interact with the matter? So uh, to show it to you, I just want to introduce you to Bob. And Bob uh, is, uh, he has some tools. He has some tools that which we can, like we can, he can see how light interact with the matter. So he has eyes, he has eyes and he also has a brain. And these two uh, organ will help will like, help will help him to to see how the light interacts with the matter. It also help help us to explain it. it help me to to explain it to you. And okay, so we have the bulb with the with the eyes, and right now he wants to just see some object. And we have some object. There is like some we have some dimensions, and right now the bulb do not see the object because something is missing on this picture and this is the light because what is really the seeing is the seeing that the light is is reflected from some some object and then the eye see this this is this, this reflection so right now we have, we have some some ray of the of the of the light of the mag electromagnetic wave that is reflected towards the yeah every in, in the every direction but the rays that it comes into the eyes of the bulb he will see and yeah, in, in this in this in this in this process in this process called reflection, he will start to analyze the data that he just received, and yeah, we'll see. And he will see the object, and this is very, and this is very like basic stuff. But uh, uh, Bob will see objects that are very large. For example, they have meters, ten of meters, one kilometer, something like that. The dimensions of something like that. He will also see some smaller stuff. Uh, for example, centimeters, millimeters, even micrometers. Um, but ears, uh, eyes uh, are uh, uh, are sensitive. So for the just one uh, like type of the of the light, one of the type of the electromagnetic wave is the visible uh, type of the of the visible like, range of the of the spectrum of the electromagnetic wavelength. And can we see smaller stuff with uh, with this visible uh, visible light? And of course we can because we can use some kind of tools like magnifier glass. So especially more experienced people know this. Uh, yeah. So when you have to, when they want to see some smaller letters or something, they need to use this magnifier glass or, or yeah something similar. But there is also some kind of. Uh, 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 but we cannot really see very very small stuff like sub micro sub, sub micrometers. And for example, if I want to see the atom or two atoms or the bonding, what is what uh, what is uh, like mm. associated with the, some kind of, yeah, with this connection of these two atoms, I would rather use the, the, the different type of the of the. Of the of the radiation of the of the electromagnetic wave of the of the light to to see this smaller 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 stuff and this in this slide 
we see whole spectrum of the light of the electromagnetic wave is the same and there is yeah as you see so there is some, some different type types of uh, types of, of of the of the light so we have the x-rays we have the cosmic ray we have visible light that is very narrow range of this whole spectra we have infrared radiation we have radio radio waves and there is some parameters that distinguish them and it's this called this wavelength and uh, the wavelength just have some different uh, so just tells us how yeah, so the length, uh, length of the wave and uh, what we what we can do yeah uh, the uh, if we want to see smaller stuff like smaller objects like like atoms or two atoms or some kind of molecules that are created with this, with this atom and we want to see them in the good resolution and we can just say something about it uh, like more, more spe 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 specific like kind of properties about about this we should we we should use uh, like uh, uh, radiation uh, light with the sm smaller wave the shorter uh, wavelength and we know that atoms have some like kind of sub uh, below nano nanometer uh, length or the, the, or the, the, the dimensions and the x-rays are very perfectly uh, like match to to this kind of to this kind of uh, like uh, have some the the wavelength of the of the x-rays is a very good match with this uh, distances between the atom and also the dimensions of, of the atoms of the of the, of the molecules and scientists use these uh, x-rays to examine it to re uh, to make measurements to measure the properties of this of these very small objects and we cannot uh, start talking about the x-ray without mentioning this this guy this very uh, famous scientist william william Rentgen, that discovered this uh, radiation this this type of radiation this type of this, this type of light in 1895 and he also is the first physicist that received the nobel prize at the beginning of the 23rd century and and yeah so and right now this is the question how this light we know already that visible light can can be reflected from the object and then we can see what really happened with the, we, see, we can see that the object in this, ref, with this, in this effect that could reflection but how the x-rays interact i mean how the could interact with the with the with the with the, with the matter uh, like the, also also interact with matter and here because we already start talking about the about our sample so we know that our sample is only one today and we want we want to check what is what, is, what are the properties of, the, of this mineral that might create uh, the life that might, that might start the, the life on, on the earth and the israel can can interact with the in, the in the few ways so for example the light can be absorbed the, 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 there are some other of, of also effect of fluorescence diffraction or scattering or the photo emission that uh, that's yeah, the light the x-rays and yeah, the other other part of the the the, the, the electromagnetic spectra can, can be can be can be inter interact with the material and with these effects uh, some kind of techniques are asso associated and there's a lot of techniques that we can measure different kind of effects that, that's how the light is interacting with matter and one question is right now there is some such a place where all the combinations of for example we have excellent uh, source of the x-rays excellent source of the of the, of the light uh, and also we can find the place where, where where you have this and also the availability of the measuring some kind of effects how the x-rays are interacting in the with the with the with, the, with, the, with my sample that we can we and we have these places around the world this we have these fun scientific facilities and there are, there are called synchrotrons and one of these such a facility is the national sector radiation center solaris in the krakow and how the x-rays are created in these facilities so i just have uh, i just show you on the very short slide that 
the x-rays and yeah not only the, the x-ray i created uh, with the uh, by the accelerated particle and in the synchrotrons and all over the world the, the we we accelerate the electrons so this very small particle of the minus charge and they are accelerated in the like circular accelerators in the moving around and because of because the these particles are very fast so they are almost at the speed of the light and in and the, during the movement they, they also interact with the magnetic field and because of these two processes they will emit the light and they, they will they will emit the, the x-rays but it's turned to it's turned out that this process is very uh, give us very good like uh, this is a very good pro uh, this is a very good uh, process where we can produce the x-rays but also can we in this in this this process in the acceleration process we can also produce other types of of, of the radiation which starts from the hard x-rays and goes to the infrared and then even microwave micro microwaves and scientists can use all of the spectra in the, in the, in the, in the synchrotrons to, uh, to, measure the, to measure the properties of the matter and different types of the, the effect will be used to check uh, what really is, uh, are our samples made of and the samples of the, uh, the adventure of the olivine just start in the, in the solaris and at the beginning so yeah we had the olivine and we just start to introduce the x-rays into the olivine and nothing happened really because what we miss at the beginning we, we do not prepare our sample well and what we have to do uh, so we have to start our preparation start preparation of the sample and uh, of course this different sample will yeah need different preparation preparation process but in our in our case the, the olivine we will just cut it and we just yeah we, we have to some slides of the olivine and right now we start to uh, illuminate the olivine with the x-rays and we see that in this process that we just measured, some kind of X-rays are transmitted, some kind of part of the of the of the of the, of the electromagnetic waves is transmitted through through the through the through the through the like through the, through, the, through the sample. And knowing some kind of parameters, so the, the energy and the intensity of the illuminated uh, uh, illuminated uh, X-rays and 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 the, and the and the and the light that is uh, transmitted. Uh, and uh, like diminution of the, of the of the of the, our sample, the slice of olivine, we can calculate something like or measure something that is called the absorption coefficient. And this technique that is based on this kind of uh, uh, effect, it will call the it is, it is called the extra absorption spectroscopy. And what we really get from this uh, type 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 of measurement, we can uh, collect some kind of spectra. Oh, sorry. Uh, kind of uh, kind of spectra, and uh, uh, and analyze this uh, this, uh, this this spectra, this uh, absorption curves. We don't uh, see the presentation right now. Okay. Can you share the screen again? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, we just, I think we finish somewhere here. So um, uh, we can analyze this absorption spectrum and uh, what we can get, what information we can get uh, with this, uh, after this, uh, this, this did analyze we can get information about the geometrical electronic structure of the, of the our sample so what that means we can get some kind of information about the chemistry and also about uh, if we yeah we know that some kind of element there is inside our sample we can also uh, say something about what is really happening around this element so uh, some, something about the ge 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 geometry of our sample okay so this is the one way that we can measure measure our our, our, our olivine so the next the next way is yeah is also we will use the x-rays and we start to illuminate our our, our x-ray and in this process also some some kind of 
particle made, made a cool, and this particle is called the photoelectron. So this is the excited excited electron that is emitted uh, excited uh, electron that is emitted from the from the surface of the sample, and it's excited by the X rays, and knowing the energy of the uh, of the, the, the energy of the and the or the wavelength of the of the of the of the of the, of the X rays, uh, we can and if we measure the energy of the of the, key, the the energy of the photoelectron by special kind of analyzers uh, we can say what is really the energy the, of the of the electrons inside the material and this guy explained it to us uh, at the beginning of the 20th, 20th century and he also received the nobel prize about the explanation of this photo 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 emission process and yeah, this, in this technique is called the X-ray photoemission spectroscopy. And what you will get from this technique is that we can get information about the chemistry, and more like more general, we just get information about the electronic structure. So we can say that the olivine is made from the oxygen, silicon, iron, and the, and the magnesium. Uh, what we also can get is that we can also measure the energy of the valence band of the valence electrons and it's it's very important to know this 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 energy of this, this valence electron in if we want to just uh, say something about the uh, of the electrical properties of the material and what we can else do with the olivine so with our sample so we can eliminate with the x-rays and the x-rays will be also reflected and we can measure this level reflect with the different angles and what we really get from this is when we know the angles of the reflection and we already know we have yeah so the, there are also some kind of the, the, the Bragg law and if we know the, the 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 angle of the reflex we can say something about the crystal structure of the material and the, this technique is called the x-ray diffraction or the x-ray crystal crystallography and the spectra of yeah so of the of this kind of reflex that that is collected in the with the different angles with the function of the different angles and it, if if you analyze analyze this co correctly, we can say something about the crystal structure. So some kind of uh, the, the arrangement of the uh, how the uh, atoms are are are, are placed in, in in the material. So to summarize, we just measure the, the, our 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 mineral uh, at the synchrotron and what technique that we, that we use. So we use the absorption spectroscopy, photoemission spectroscopy, then there, is all, uh, there are a lot of modes that we can use to, to not just the basic one that I just presented to you, but there are a lot of different techniques, different uh, modes of this technique that we can use to, 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 to analyze, uh, analyze our sample, to measure our sample. And from these techniques, we can, all, we can say about these two uh, properties of the material, so about the chemistry and also about this electrical properties, but and also we have the, the different techniques that are, we sell, that uh, we tell us a little bit about the about the crystal structure. So this, we have the, this, this X-ray diffraction techniques, and but also many more is is available. And if you want to check it, what are really what is the te te techniques and the modes of the the the, the effects that I already presented? You can, you can just yeah check check on our website what is uh, really available in a, in our facility. And with this, I just thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tomek, for this very interesting talk. Uh, I'm afraid we are quite far 